세이야! 시바라 군내대로. So uh, I just finished Like a Dragon Gaiden a few weeks ago, so I thought now would be the perfect time to make a tier list video of all the Yakuza games I played so far and look back on the series as a whole. I should start by saying that I haven't played all of them, namely the two samurai spin-offs. So the games I'll be ranking today, 13 of them, are Yakuza 0 through 7, Gaiden, of course, Yakuza Dead Souls, the two Judgment games, and the Fist of the North Star game. As you can see, I already have them ordered in tiers, and I'll be going from my least to most favorite. I think you'll notice that nothing's in the D tier. That's because I don't consider any of these games to be bad in the slightest. Some are just vastly, and I mean vastly, superior to others. I'll be mentioning some spoilers, so if I start talking about the game you haven't played yet, just use the time skips I have in the description. Bear in mind, these are just my opinions. I have some opinions that are pretty mainstream, others, not so much. A perfect example being Last Place, number 13. My least favorite Yakuza game is Yakuza Kiwami 2. Oh what, did you expect Dead Souls to be here instead? I'll start by saying that I realize that overall, Kiwami 2 is probably a better game than most of the games, say, in the C or B tier. But unfortunately, the order in which I played these games definitely plays a part in my enjoyment of them. And Yakuza 2 got the short end of the stick, as it was one of the last ones I played, so it had a lot to live up to. My biggest issue with Kiwami 2 is that they really started taking the piss when it comes to side content. Literally. Just because it's kind of funny to have a peeing minigame doesn't mean it's a good idea. Couldn't you have at least made it fun to play or something? This pissing minigame is kind of reflective of the mindset the studio had after the success of Yakuza 0, which was, doesn't matter if it's fun, just make it goofy. The Majima Construction minigame, for example, was just an inferior version of Yakuza 6 minigame where you have gang wars and stuff, and I just couldn't be bothered to do this dumb side story. Not to mention they pulled that thing they do in every game since Zero, you know, the haha, we are the four dark horses of the apocalypse or some shit, and we're like a big deal, you know, please, please care about us, please. Oh, sorry, I just couldn't be bothered to deal with this shit again. And guess what? It happens again in Gaiden. My eyes went all the way back to my exhibitor lobe once that happened. I swear, some sections of the game straight up just felt unfinished. Like this golden castle section, which was a huge pain in the ass. What about the story though? I think the story is the reason a lot of people hold this game in high regard, especially with the introduction of Ryuji, who is often hailed as being the best antagonist in the series. And I agree, Ryuji is a great character. But he's not enough to save this game though. Because I think the story is a fucking mess. It's like, oops, Tirada's dead. Oh wait, no he isn't. Oh shit, Tirada's gonna detonate a bomb killing everyone here. Oh wait, he's just bluffing. This guy's a fucking mess of a character. I also didn't care much for the police chick. I forgot her name. She's just very forgettable in my opinion. Honestly, the highlight of this game is seeing Daigo's introduction to the series, as well as the Omi Alliance, since they're very important later on. Daigo is the only reason I wouldn't outright tell someone to skip this game entirely. This game is the most forgettable Yakuza game in my opinion. It's so forgettable that I had to watch a story summary before making this video, which is why it's down here. Well, I'm willing to bet that I would have personally enjoyed the original Yakuza 2 over this Kiwami version, since it's most likely free from all the extra bullshit they crammed in Kiwami. Number 12 is Lost Paradise. Now, I would have most likely enjoyed this game a lot more if I knew about the source material, but even with knowing next to nothing about this series, I still enjoy my time with this game. It doesn't have the deepest combat, the town is kinda small compared to the rest of the series, and the story is rather simple. Here's the catch though, you get to pop people's heads like a bunch of balloons. Thus, I propose that this is a good ass game. It's not just over the top though, the combat is actually really fun once you start unlocking a lot of new skills. I also love the various minigames in this one. I'm pretty sure I spent more time making cocktails than playing the actual game. I did the entirety of the Nursery Rhymes minigame in like one sitting. I liked it that much. But my biggest complaint about this game is unfortunately the pacing. I swear, it takes like 8 goddamn chapters before you're free to run around the city and do whatever. And I don't care how you spin it, that's just not justifiable by any means. Having free reign is like the best part of these games and the first half of the game is just cutscene, fight some dudes. Cutscene, fight bu a bunch more dudes. 
cutscene talk to these people tutorial cutscene fight more dudes this is a game that i can only recommend if you're one a fan of the source material or two you're really craving another yakuza like game but i mean we already have a lot of those so uh anyway next game number 11 is judgment now what could possibly be wrong with judgment that i have it in the c tier between all of these games judgment easily had one of the best main stories and had a lot of really great scenes which is almost always a given when there's a murder mystery involved but the pacing was absolute garbage and there's enough filler here to fill 100 boston cream donuts sorry that line was shit let me, let me just there we go, there we go. Almost nothing worthy of note happens between finding Shinitani's body to finding Hamura in hiding. But, I mean, bad pacing is nothing new to the Yakuza series, right? I also really like all the main characters in this game. Kaito, Higashi, Sugiura, and while he is one of my least favorite Yakuza protagonists, Yagami is pretty cool too. Here's my issue though. The gameplay sucks ass. The combat is floaty and doesn't feel good to play, I hate the new additions to the combat like mortal wounds and the dumb pills they expect you to take in the middle of fighting. This game easily has the worst combat system in the series by far. And of course, the worst part of this game, trailing missions. Who doesn't like those? Whoever thought that these were a good idea needs to be fired. I'm at least 99% sure that nobody playtested these missions. They tried to implement a variety of new gameplay features in the judgment games, you know, to make you feel all detective-y. But they end up being a complete ass and hinder the game overall. So yeah, the story and characters are the only reason why this game isn't in last place. Would I recommend this game? Honestly, no. If you're really interested, just watch the cutscenes, cause actually playing this game was unbearable. Or at least it was for me. Number 10 is... Uh, this is the last C tier game, so uh, it's gotta be Dead Souls, right? Nope, it's Yakuza 5. My biggest issue with Yakuza 5 is that it's too fucking big. So much so that I barely remember jack shit about it. This game does not know what it wants to be. It tries to do so many things but doesn't do anything particularly well. What I do remember is that the story was a mess start to finish. Oh, remember that sweet scrawny guy you met in prison? The one who got bullied by this psycho? Yeah, actually that guy was working together with the psycho just to get you out of prison because this guy this guy and everyone's mothers are actually working for this old guy. Fuck off with that shit, Yakuza. So the story was dark shit, Haruka's part was horrendously boring, uh, Shinada was completely useless to the overall plot and I didn't enjoy his story, not in the slightest. I don't know fuck all about baseball and nor do I care to be frank. Uh, I sound like I hate this game right now, but there is one saving grace actually. And that is, the gameplay was fire. Yes, my experience with Yakuza 5 was the complete opposite to my experience with Judgment. But overall, I put Yakuza 5 higher than Judgment because I think gameplay has to be at least passable before I give a shit about your story. Would I recommend this game though? Honestly, no. All you need to take away from Yakuza 5 is that Hark has worked as an idol now and that this guy named Otase is now the Omi Lions chairman and that he's kinda cool. That's all. Move on. You're ready to play Yakuza 6 now. Oh wait, no, 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 I take that back. Don't skip this game. How else are you going to waste your life by going to a cabaret club inside Sajima's mind while he's still in prison? That part was like really important to the plot. I don't even think Yakuza 6 would even make sense to you without experiencing this incredible moment in the franchise. Surely, surely that Souls is next, right? Nope, it's Yakuza 0. Okay, no, yeah, number 9 is Dead Souls. Still though, this game is a bit high up on the list for what it is, right? But yes, I do like this game. Do you know why? Because it knows what it wants to be. It wants to be a shitty zombie shooter game with the Yakuza goofiness cranked up to 11. And it does that flawlessly. Take notes, Yakuza 5. Is the story dumb? Well, yes, all zombie stories are. Do they take themselves too seriously sometimes? Probably, but I fail to see why that's a bad thing. This game keeps things simple. It's divided into four relatively short parts, and I like that. It's not filled to the brim with meaningless content. Uh, hi, hello, uh, this is me from the future, coming to say that I sincerely retract that remark. I forgot the subterranean missions existed. Those were an absolute waste of my life. But it doesn't change this game's placement on my list. Uh, anyway, uh, carry on past me.
You can finish this game in like a day if you really wanted to and skipped all the side content. As for the story, uh, fucking what story? Uh, okay, as for the characters, this was the first game to let us control Majima, which was pretty cool. And it's the only game where you can play as Ryuji. That's right, I met Ryuji through this game first. And honestly, I liked him more in this game. He's so much more mature. Now, some of you might think that I'm memeing by putting Dead Souls this high up, but I assure you I'm not. I played this again recently, right after playing RE4 Remake this year, so I know what a good game looks like, and I know that this game is crap when compared to RE4, but you know what? This game is fun, and it deserves to be given a chance. Next is Yakuza Kiwami. This game is like the benchmark Yakuza game that I use to measure the quality of all the other games, because it's just uh, average at everything. This game represents the perfect middle ground of the quality you'd expect out of the series. It is the first game in the series though, so if you played Zero and the others first, you'll notice some amount of blemishes, mainly in the storytelling. But I have to at least like this game, because it's the start of Kiryu's journey for fuck's sake. And because of that, this is the first game on this list that I can recommend with no issues. The biggest jarring thing you'll notice about the story is that Kiryu doesn't really act like the Kiryu we've come to know from the later games. It almost feels like the writers were still unsure on what sort of character they wanted Kiryu to be. He was a lot less... Uh, respectful? This is a relatively short game though, and it doesn't overstay its welcome, which is great, and it makes it that much easier to recommend. The gameplay is exactly like it is in Yakuza 0, so there's nothing to worry about in that regard. Other than the fact that every boss can heal, which is bullshit, who thought that was a good idea? It borrows a bit too much from Zero though, in my opinion. Even what I consider to be the bad parts of Zero, like fucking pocket circuit and this shit. Mini games like these were fine for one game, but this game expects you to go through another 10 pocket circuit racing sub-stories before you get to fight them on which I didn't bother to do by the way. I've had enough of that in Zero, thank you very much. Another thing I hold against this game is single-handedly being responsible for reducing Majima's character to funny crazy man with eye patch. While Majima everywhere had some funny moments, it gets old really fast. Overall, again, this game is just middle of the road for me. Last of the B tier, I have Yakuza 3. Now there might be some bias behind the placement of this one, because this is the first Yakuza game I've ever played. But from my perspective, that has nothing to do with my love for this game. At least, I'd like to think so. I'm aware that I'm in the minority here, but I just really like the idea or the concept of an old Yakuza badass attempting to escape his previous life, and does so by taking care of the kids there as if they were his own children. Now, some might think that this is more akin to babysitting than playing a video game, but honestly it all pays off by the end, especially in the later games. The story might have some dumb moments here and there, like the mere existence of Joji Kazama, and some might know that the developers have already stated that this game was rushed to a certain degree. But I still enjoyed the ride. I liked all the new characters, the antagonists, and Rikia is still my little buddy. His death scene is still one of the most heart-wrenching moments in the series. It's also the first time we've ever seen Kiryu get this emotional over someone's death. That's right Yumi, you ain't got shit on Rikia. His reaction was even more heartbreaking than the death itself, mostly cause the voice acting was perfect. The biggest complaint people have about Yakuza 3 though is the combat and the fact that enemies keep blocking. And I kinda understand but bro just I don't know try sidestepping or wall juggling or literally anything other than directly attacking the blocking enemy. The combat here isn't the best but it's not as bad as some people might have you believe. Yakuza 3 is also the only game to feature Okinawa, a stark contrast from Kamurocho, and it's excellent in my opinion. A good game ought to have varied locations, unless you're Yakuza 5, in which case just, just don't, don't do anything. And now we've reached the big boys. Honestly, all the games I've talked about up till now, I really had to think about their order on this list. But my top 6 games I just threw together instinctively. I just knew these were the best ones in this exact order. And at number 6, I have Lost Judgment. This game easily had the best main story out of any of these games, period. It was engaging from start to finish, and there was way less filler. It also had the best antagonists in my opinion. Soma was such a menacing figure and I absolutely loved his boss theme. I blast that shit at full volume on my way to the gym every day.
The other antagonist, Kuwana, was a breath of fresh air for the series as well. The gameplay, which was a major problem in the first game, is significantly better here. Mostly thanks to the addition of the snake style, which was so much more fun compared to Yagami's other fighting styles. That's where the positives stop, however, as even this A tier game has some issues. They toned down the dumb trailing missions, which is great. But they introduced this dumb climbing feature straight out of that one climbing simulator game, which is just as bad. Another thing this game added was the school missions. They toned down the amount of sub stories and added a ton of these instead. And they were horrendous. I did a bit of the dancing club story and then I just stopped because I realized that they were about to dump a big pile of shit side stories about characters I don't care about down my throat. So I just skipped all of them after that. Sub stories weren't much better. I just realized that I hate all the sub stories in the two judgment games. I miss it when we were just walking around town and some random crazy shit happens instead of meeting people in Smileburg every time as they tell us their life story. And even when sub stories aren't that, they just end up recycling the same old concepts. Oh, there's a rumor about a UFO in town. So we catch the UFO. Oh wait, it's not actually real. We learn valuable life lessons and move on as an actual UFO can be seen in the distance. Now, let's flash back a bit to 2010. There's a rumor about a kappa in town. So we catch the kappa. Oh wait, it's not an actual kappa. We learn valuable life lessons and move on as an actual kappa stares at us from a manhole. These two games are 11 years apart, by the way. Next up, at number 5, I have the most recent entry to the series, Like a Dragon, Gaiden. Probably the shortest game on this list, this game was made purely to hype up the upcoming Yakuza 8 and get us up to speed on what Kiryu was doing between Yakuza 6 and 7. At least that's what was advertised, cause you end up playing as this random guy called Joyu, who is the guy I'm dressed as at the moment. Which is kinda weird, not gonna lie. Where the hell is Kiryu? I bought this game so I can play as scare you goddammit. This game has a good mix of good gameplay and good storytelling. I'm noticing that this series has a hard time getting both right, so it's good that this game was able to achieve that. The story wasn't amazing, mind you, it had some great moments and some really dumb ones. But it really wasn't meant to be a standalone thing after all. That ending though, that ending fucking broke me. If my parents walked in on me during that scene, they'd think my best friend just died or some shit. As for the gameplay, it really is fun just running around Sotenbori, finding items via the spider gadget, and completing simple missions around town which were like mini sub-stories without the extra fluff. The more traditional sub-stories are still here of course, uh, but they were more akin to the ones in Judgment, which again, I despise. Some were good, like the ChatGPT one, but others... Eh, not so much. I appreciate that they were kept to a minimum though, as there's not a lot of them and most of them were just recruiting guys for the Colosseum battles. And speaking of the Colosseum, the fights there were a blast to play through and even offered a decent challenge that this series is normally not known for. The combat is still a bit jank as you can get juggled very easily, especially at the Colosseum, but it's definitely an improvement over Judgment's battle system. There's honestly not a lot of negative things I can say about this game- Oh for fuck's sake, not this again. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Oh, uh, and one more thing. Sega, do you see this? No. Bad Sega. Never do this again, please. No offense to any of the actresses, of course, but I was just dying of cringe playing this shit. But other than this, and the inclusion of Life Wasting Simulator, Gaiden really was a great game. Although it was only made as a precursor to Infinite Wealth, it really ended up being its own beast entirely. And the last A tier game is Yakuza 0, the best selling Yakuza game to date and the game that single handedly made this series mainstream. It's also the game that revived my personal interest in the series after Yakuza 5 almost destroyed it, and it was the first Yakuza game on the PS4 so it felt very smooth compared to all the previous games. As someone who got into the series way before Yakuza 0 existed, I was a bit confused on why this game in particular was such a success. I thought, well, maybe it's because you don't need any prior knowledge of this series to play this game, and people saw that and decided to give it a chance. But on further inspection, I think the actual reason was that they cranked up the goofiness factor by a hundred gajillion. People were astonished by how Yakuza 0 could be all serious one moment, and then hit you with this in a span of 5 seconds. And most of these moments could be attributed to the sub-stories. This game, in my opinion, had the best sub-stories out of all the games I've listed so far. 
minus the cabaret club and the business mini games because I, I didn't enjoy them as much. Now, uh, as for the story, which is another thing this game nailed, it was great seeing and playing as 20 year old baby Kiryu and seeing his friendship with Nishiki, finally. But honestly, the highlight of this game, for me at least, ended up being the look into Majima's past, his relationship with Makoto to be exact. And their ending was one of the best in the series. It was sad, but it made sense. And fuck Kiwami too for trying to emulate the feeling that ending gave us. One thing against the story though is that, like most of these games, the story takes a while to get interesting. But it's especially bad here because this game is supposed to be the best entry point for newcomers. I would have appreciated a stronger hook, instead you're greeted with walls and walls of text. It just doesn't give a very good first impression, especially for how good this game actually is. Oh, uh, and one more thing. I found Shibusawa to be an underwhelming main antagonist. Kuze, for example, was a much more engaging enemy who I actually gave a shit about. I just found it to be a shame that Shibusawa was actually the final boss. There's not much to say about the gameplay that I haven't already said, but since this is the first game to introduce having multiple fighting styles, you know, other than the samurai games, I'm giving it a bit more credit. Although Yakuza 0 isn't quite S tier for me, I totally understand why most people think it's the best entry in the series. Oh wait, shit, this is the game that introduced pocket circuit racing, oh god no. Nah, never mind, fuck this game, it's going in D tier. Alright, now we've reached the three games that in my opinion, elevated the series into something truly special. These top three were almost equal in my eyes, with my top one only beating my second and third picks by a very small margin. And at third place, I have Yakuza 4 a game I consider to be the peak of the franchise for a very long time. Even today, whenever someone brings up the Yakuza series, my brain immediately goes to Yakuza 4. Let's be real for a second. Our love for Kiryu is the main fuel for our love for Yakuza, right? He's just so gentlemanly, kind, badass, and a fucking tank. Now, let's take Kiryu, multiply him by 4, and give each of his alter egos a different kind of ego. That's exactly what Yakuza 4 did. This is the first game in the series to have multiple unique protagonists, and all of them were top tier characters. Akiyama, Saijima, and Tanimura each have compelling stories that are worth experiencing, and Akiyama and Saijima ended up being mainstay characters in the series, unfortunate for Tanimura though. This game easily has some of the best cutscenes and moments in all of these games. Akiyama sussing Lily out, Saijima's fight with Kiryu, his moment at the Colosseum, Tanimura getting ambushed, Akiyama and Tanimura versus Kiryu, even if the setup was kinda stupid. And of course, that final battle. My god, that was the hypest shit ever. People often criticize this game for some awful story decisions made by the end of the game, but it's like they forgot all the amazing moments that came before it. I'm not even defending the bad parts of the story, and it's fair to criticize it over them. But Okay, first off, it's not as bad as Yakuza 2 is bullshit. And second, are you really gonna dispess an entire fucking game off of one scene? A Yakuza game at that. These games have always been goofy as shit, come on now. Hell, even if I did think the story was dark shit, this game easily has the best pacing and structure, I think. This is the easiest game to replay by far. First off, because it's divided evenly, it almost feels like playing four mini Yakuza games instead of one large one. Every time you switch characters, it feels like you just started a new game, and I fucking love that. And they all control so very differently, and they're all very fun to play as. And yes, this was also good in Yakuza 5 too, I'm not just being biased. Second, it's actually not that large a game by any means. It's fairly short, and most importantly, there's no filler. This is what this series needs. Quality over quantity. More of this and less of this. I can say the same thing about the sub-stories, thankfully. Each character has about 15 sub-stories, quality sub-stories at that, the best in the series in my opinion. Yes, even better than Zero's. And lastly, this game has my favorite soundtrack out of all of these games. The opening, the music that plays during the long battles, Manjuma's boss theme, all of the final boss themes, all of these are incredible and add so much to the game. No matter how good this series gets with Yakuza 8, Yakuza 4 will always have a special place in my heart, and I still consider it to be a masterpiece to this day. At second place is Yakuza 6 The Song of Life the only game to have a subtitle, that's how you know they weren't messing around with this one. This game surpassed all my expectations for where this series was going. All the Yakuza games I played after 4 didn't even come close to surpassing it. But this one, this one managed to excel in literally everything. 
The only negative I could find was that the beginning parts of the game were very cutscene heavy. But I mean, at this point you're already invested in these characters, and the game takes place immediately after Yakuza 5. So it's only a negative if this is your first Yakuza game, which I definitely wouldn't recommend. Other than that, I really do think this game is perfect. As perfect as the Yakuza game could get anyway. The highlight though has got to be the story. I don't know if at first they really were going to make this the end of Kiryu's saga, but if that was the plan, I certainly wouldn't have complained, and I even believed that we'd never see Kiryu again for a good while. This game by far has my favorite ending out of any game ever. Any game ever, not just in this franchise. This ending never fails to bring me to tears every time I watch it, and it was the perfect ending to Kiryu's story in my opinion. It wasn't just the ending though. Kiryu looking for the identity of his grandson's father is such a great motivator, and I was invested from beginning to end, especially because it's Haruka's son, our freaking daughter at this point. I might have hated her part in Yakuza 5, but damn it, it was worth it just to get here. This game introduces the town of Onomichi, and again, like Okinawa, I like the sharp contrast between it and Kamurocho. I loved getting to know the residents of Onomichi and our eventual squad. I like all the mini games there, all the sub stories. I can fanboy about this game all day, by the way. This game had the best combat in the series at the time of its release, anyway. It was also the first game in the Dragon Engine, so that definitely left a lasting impression. Like Yakuza 4, this game also had an incredible soundtrack, especially Yuta, Somaya's, and Amon's battle themes. And speaking of Amon, this game had my favorite Amon fight. We kinda can't do anything except Tiger Drop, but uh, I loved how challenging it was, and the feeling I got after finally winning was spectacular. I loved this game so much that this was the first Yakuza game I ever platinumed. This is a game that I won't forget for as long as I live, and I'm so glad I went through all the other games just to get here. And I think it should be clear by now, but my favorite Yakuza game is Yakuza Like a Dragon, or Yakuza 7. I'm a simple man. Give me a turn-based RPG with a reasonable amount of depth and customization, and you've got my attention. I was skeptical at first if turn-based would be a good fit for the series, as were a lot of people, I'm sure. But it just works so freaking well. Some people don't like to hear this, but it's obvious that this game took heavy inspiration from Persona. They weren't even trying to hide that fact, come on. Let's see. Turn-based combat. Check. Social stats. Check. Tests. Check. Literal Persona music. Check. Cheating and getting your ass beat for getting caught. Check, check, and check. As blatant as it is, Persona is my favorite game series, so it was a good call in my book. What they do do different to Persona I like as well, however. Like, instead of using demons to fight, you're given traditional job classes to choose from. And I'm using the word traditional very loosely here. This is where most of the game's fun comes from, experimenting with different job classes and building your perfect team. Now, the combat isn't perfect, of course. This is their first foray into turn-based combat, after all. And there's a lot of dumb stuff they overlooked, like how every unit is constantly moving randomly, affecting your decision-making and creating some awkward glitches. It's still really fun, though, so I'm very easily able to forgive these blemishes. And I still think this is the most fun Yakuza's combat has ever been. It takes for forever to get fun though. I swear, for the first 10 hours or so, the combat is just press X to win. But this is a long ass game, so 10 hours might as well be nothing. So push through and you'll experience something truly special, as you would with the story as well. Unlike the gameplay, however, this is the only main story in a Yakuza game to hook you by the balls from the very start. Normally, the stories take a while before getting interesting, right? Not with this game and it makes those first 10 hours of boring gameplay easier to get through. The story is interesting all throughout, and like Yakuza 6 and Gaiden, the ending really got me in this one. Especially with the voice acting. Yes, even the English voice acting. Kaiji Tang nailed that final scene. This game I personally wouldn't classify as being perfect like I would Yakuza 6. I think this game has a lot of fat that needs to be trimmed, like side characters who go on and on about nothing and having long ass dumb cutscenes for side mini games. But God damn it, the highs of this game are just so astronomically high that I have to place it in the number one spot. And there you have it, I have now summarized my thoughts on every single Yakuza game I've played. As for my top three, any one of these could be my favorite Yakuza game on different days of the week. If you want a powerful yet short journey with amazing characters, Yakuza 4 has your back. 
If you want a fantastic story with lots of emotional scenes, then Yakuza 6 is the one for you. And if you want a long ass 50 plus hour epic journey filled with twists and turns, then Yakuza 7 has the obvious advantage. Now could you imagine a turn-based Yakuza game where we play as the Yakuza 4 protagonists with a story that's just as emotional as Yakuza 6 was? Now that that would be peak Yakuza. There are so many things to take into consideration when rating this series that there really is no general consensus on which game is the best. Because it depends. What do you prioritize? Is it gameplay? Story? Side quests? Structure? Characters? Fucking minigames? Maybe you just really like Virtua Fighter. Maybe you think turn-based combat is kinda boring. I have friends whose favorite Yakuza game is Judgment, and a lot of people consider Kiwami 2 to be one of the best in the series. And here I am putting those two in the C tier, and I think that fact shows how wide a range of fans this series has been able to attract over the years, and it speaks volumes for their quality. Now, overall, I would give my S tier games like a 9 out of 10. Will Yakuza 8 manage to be a 10 out of 10 and create the S plus tier? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching everyone, and I also want to know what your top 3 Yakuza games are, so please feel free to leave a comment down below all about those, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.